Well, hello there, and welcome back to yet another installment of Rapid Links. Oh, and if you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit like and subscribe if you like the content or learn anything. Thanks a bunch. Today, we are going to take a look at a Mick Mars inspired sequencer run that I put together. Oh, and a massive thank you to all of my Instagram followers who voted on me actually doing this video. I had no intention of actually making this. But enough of you guys seem to uh, vote that you wanted one, so here you go. Thanks, I needed the motivation together. Basically the inspiration for this particular shred run comes from the solos Too Young to Fall in Love, which is a banger, go check it out. And probably the hardest solo McMars ever recorded, the solo for Primal Scream. There's a little section there where he climbs pentatonic. I'm gonna show you basically the bare bones of how that works and then we'll kind of break it down and talk about it. Oh, and because I like you guys, after those two licks, you're gonna get a bonus sweep, which has absolutely nothing to do with Mick Mars. I don't think I've ever heard him play a sweep ever in my entire life, but uh, yeah, uh, for some reason I ended my phrase with a sweep. It recorded, I kinda liked it, so it's staying in there and I'm gonna show it to you. Oh, a couple of quick housekeeping things to take care of just before we get going with this lick. Uh, I'm gonna be doing everything tuned down half a step, so make sure you grab a guitar and tune down half a step, otherwise this is going to sound like poop. Uh, also, even though we are tuned down half a step, I'm gonna carry on just referring to everything as if we're in standard tune because you know the drill, if I try to compensate for the tuning differences, I'm gonna make a mistake, I'm gonna get confused, you're gonna get confused, you're not gonna learn anything, we're gonna have a bad time, nobody wants that, okay? Good. And as far as playing, everything is going to be basically in D minor and D minor pentatonic, so no surprises there. We'll be using, you know, good old friendly box shape number one, and probably position shape number five a little bit, and maybe a little bit of position shape number two. But we'll get to that in a minute. All right, let's go. All right, so the entire lick, what will that sound like? Play it slowly. Something kind of like that. Uh, basically, this entire lick is uh, built and designed around uh, D minor. So D minor, of course, we're going to be doing this three notes per string. Just that kind of thing. So we you know we're only going to be dealing, of course, with the uh, 13, 12, and the 11 on the high E. And then moving down through the scale, of course, we've got on our B, we'll have 13, 11, 10. And then we're going to move down here onto our G, and we'll be looking at just the 12, 10, 9. And then once we get on to our D string, we're looking at 12, 10, and 8. And then the same for the other two strings, 12, 10, 8, 12, 10, 8. Just like that, okay? That's basically all we're going to be using. Uh, when we ascend, we're going to be doing basically just pentatonics. So, of course, D minor pentatonic. That good old favorite box of everybody. So, anyway, we'll talk more about that as we get going. So, lick one. What does lick one look and sound like. Basically, it's this idea here. Okay, uh, basically all Mick is doing here is he's basically coming down D minor, but he's gonna play a note, skip a note, play a note, go back up one, play a note, skip a note, play a note. Just like that. Now the easier way to kind of think about this when you're playing this is you could just do it on one string, kind of like this, moving down the scale. That sort of thing. But of course Mick is doing this kind of moving through the actual scale across the strings, which is super neat. All right, so to start this thing off, all we're gonna do, locate ourselves up here at the 13th fret of the high E string, come back here, then play the 10th fret, and then Come up here and grab the 12th fret, come over and then grab the 13th fret of the B, and then come back down here and grab the 12th fret of the high E, and then back over there and grab the 11th fret of the B, and you kind of see the pattern here, it's just, just like that. So as you guessed it, we're just going to move through the scale doing this. Just like that. Now this part here is probably the only one I really do want you to kind of focus on. So once you've kind of been doing this, you know, descending twos thing, 
and you get to there on your B string. This part's tricky. This is a finger roll. So basically all I'm doing is I'm just going right here from the uh, the 10th fret on the B, rolling over onto the G, like that with my finger. So just kind of a rolling motion and then carrying on and then position shifting. All right, so watch how that happens. Just like that, folks. Nice and easy. So all together, play it at a decent pace. It'll look kind of like this. That sort of thing. Okay, lick number two. What does lick number two look and sound like? It'll look and sound a little bit like this. Okay, now this sequence is really neat because all it is is basically, again, Mick Myers is kind of taking a repeating pattern and just moving it through a pentatonic scale. So basically, I'm going to do this position once, and pretty much every time we go, uh, we skip a string, we're going to start the sequence over again, which is really neat. Uh, Mick doesn't do a lot of ideas like this. You see guys like George Lentz do this sort of thing. Not so much Mick, which is why I really like this. Uh, anyway, so let's take a look at that. Once you've finished, of course, sequence one, you stop here on our D note on the uh, low E. What you're going to do is think of pentatonic. Come down here and you're going to grab the eighth fret on your A string. Come back up to the D located on the E string here on the tenth fret and play that again. Then you're going to do a finger roll again over here onto the tenth fret of your A string. Okay, so we got this so far. Okay, and then come back to that D you just played. So we got this. Okay, then what Mick does is he jumps up kind of a little position shift here, and we're gonna grab right there on the 10th fret of the G string, and you're gonna play that. And then of course, as you just saw me do here, you're gonna come up and grab, I'm using my index for this, grab the 12th fret of the A string. So we've got this so far. Okay, and that's pretty much the end of that little lick. Now he's going to repeat this an octave. So what you're going to do to signal that you're starting the new octave run, and I think this is really neat, what Mick does is he grabs, again, the D, but this time the D located over here on the 12th fret of your D string, and he plays that twice. Okay, so that signifies the start of the new lick, which is the re repetition of the lick we just played. So it'll look like this. Okay, and then just repeat what you just did, but moving through the scale. Thinking pentatonic, repeat this pattern. You're gonna grab the 10th fret of your G string. Come back up here and play that D again on the 12th fret of the D string. So we got, and then finger roll back onto that G string again on the 12th fret. And then play again the 10th fret of the G string. So we got. Okay, just like that. And we're not done finger rolling, use your index. Come down here and grab the 10th fret of the B string. And then back up here and grab the 12th fret of your G string. Okay, so all together up to this point, here's what we got. All right, and you got it. We're gonna repeat this exact same pattern. So you're gonna play the 13th fret on the B string two times, just like that. Go over here, grab the 10th fret on your high E string, play that once. Come back up here and grab the 13th fret on the B string. So we got this. Like so. Finger roll over here and grab the 13th fret on the high E string. And then come back and play the 11th fret on the high E string. So we got. And of course, this is where I finish this phrase. What I do is I just come up here and I grab the 15th fret, put a big full step bend on it. Release that back down to the 15. Come back here to the 13 on the high E. And then just grab right there, which happens to be a D note. We're in D minor pentatonic, so it makes perfect sense. And that, of course, is the 15th fret on the B string. Just like that. So that entire phrase, all up to here, will look and sound a little bit like this. Perfect. Okay, so the last lick, the last sequence, if you will. This one isn't Mick Mars's at all. This one's actually mine. I have no idea why this ended up in the video, but I don't know, I felt like I needed a sweep. So basically all we're gonna do for this is we're just gonna be thinking about a D minor arpeggio, and I'm gonna be doing it on three strings, and I'm gonna start off by doing basically uh, just right here, we're gonna go 17, 
pulling off back to the 13 on the high E, grabbing the D located on the 15th fret of the B, and then grabbing right here the 14th fret on your G. So we got this, this little kind of arpeggio. Okay, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna repeat this arpeggio all over the place. So the entire lick will look and sound kind of like this all together. Just like that. All I'm doing is literally the exact same arpeggio, but just sliding around. So basically all you're gonna do for this, again, like I just showed you, we're gonna do that D minor arpeggio. And once you get right there to the uh, 14th fret of your G string, you're gonna slide that all the way back to the 10. Like that, okay, so we got this. Okay, now you might have noticed that we're just repeating the exact same thing, but in octaves. So all you're gonna do is play now the 14th fret with your pinky on the G string. Pull off to the 10. Come up here and grab the 12th fret of the D string. So we've got this. Then what you're gonna do is, I'm using my index ring and I'm grabbing right here on the 12th fret of the A string and I'm gonna slide that now all the way down to the ninth fret. Okay, so we got this so far. And you're probably seeing the pattern here. This is just octave, so all you're gonna do is repeat that little triad D minor arpeggio. So of course all we're gonna do then is go from 12 on the A string, pull off back to eight on the A string, and then just resolve this right there on the 10th fret of your big E string, which happens to be a D, and we're in D minor, so that works out perfectly. All right, so let's play that whole piece of the sequence together. Just like that, and of course, I think you saw me end it with like D minor, maybe it was a D minor here. Maybe I got crafty and did like, I don't know, something like that. I can't remember, but I just ended on a D minor. You can play it however you want. It's all in the key of D minor, so it all makes sense. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's play all three of those sequences together, slowly. Let's do that a little bit quicker. All right, maximum effort. Alright, so there you have it, one Mick Mars inspired shred sequencer. Uh, big takeaways here though guys is I don't want you to think of this stuff just the way I've outlined it. Like when you're doing the, you know, the down to descending pattern, you don't have to play it linearly all the way across. I just did that for ease of teaching. You could of course do that like something that maybe CC DeVille would do where you go halfway and then start over again. Kind of a... That sort of thing, or you could even do it, you know... Something like that, or you could play it, you know, maybe even... Stuff like that, you kind of get the idea here. Don't just take these licks as I'm teaching them to you. Try and apply them in different ways, sequence them however you, your heart desires, and come up with your own really cool sounding stuff, right? That's kind of the idea behind this, and that's what you should be focusing on. Oh, and of course, as far as picking, I mean, I didn't really talk about it. I'm doing more or less alternate picking mixed with a little bit of hybrid picking, but feel free to throw in some legato, feel free to throw in whatever it is you want. I mean, basically the idea here is just the patterns and finding things that sound neat to your ears and applying them however you see fit. So experiment, find what works for you. But yeah, that's it. That's the entire lick. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did like the lick, if you learned anything, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, help the channel grow a little bit. Uh, but yeah, again, that's all I got for you guys today. So uh, as per usual, just keep on shredding and we'll talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.